Good evening, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. <sighs> so, as I was going into the theater today, uh, the people in front of me had a little bit of trouble with their ticket. Because um, you go to AMC, they scan your phone nine times out of ten on the way in. The people in front of me, the, the, their phone wasn't taken, so they had to scan and, and do that. And they were going to see uh, Dune Part 2 in IMAX, and... I've never been more envious of people in my life as I'm getting my ticket scanned to go in to see Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Um, Because here's the thing about this movie. The movie is Sony's second worst movie to come out this year, which is not saying much because they've only really had two major releases this year, and the other one was Madam Web. This is not Madam Web bad, and I don't think this movie is even as bad as the Rotten... Like, I feel like I'm in a very Batman v Superman situation. Like, the Rotten Tomatoes score implies the movie's a lot worse than it actually is. I, I, like, there are elements that are enjoyable. Like, I think the best joke in the movie comes at the very end, because it's like, the mayor has been a pain in the ass the entire time, and they, 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 they call back to a joke from the original movie. Uh, someone calls him dickless. Like, that was something that, like, it got an audible... It was the only thing in the movie that got an audible laugh out of me was, was that little callback. But again, what the movie is, is it's a... This feels like what they wanted to do for the... Like, okay, how do I put this? When we talk about Star Wars, we talk a lot about how, you know, J.J. started things in motion, Ryan Johnson comes along and answers the questions that J.J. posits, in, in the, the Force Awakens, and then J.J. comes back and undoes it all because he doesn't like the answers. He wants to go back to the way he was going to do it, um, rather than picking up the story and continuing it on. The This feels like another Ghostbusters fan came along after seeing Afterlife and wanted to reboot Ghostbusters again. And they're like, well, no, this is how I would do it. So... There's a lot of them trying to reestablish things, and, like, the the beginning of this movie, I'm sitting there, I'm watching this, and I'm like, there is so much fucking exposition, because I think to a certain degree, they know very few people actually remember what happened in Afterlife, because I, I saw Afterlife once in theaters, and I haven't watched it since. Like, I, I think that they expect that people are going to remember that movie, um... So they just kind of have to relay all the groundwork to make sure that you understand all the key information. That like, oh, okay, so you know, Paul Rudd is the is the you know science teacher. He was he was possessed um, and became the dog, and the dog and 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 Carrie Coon was also one of the dogs, and they fucked, and then you end up with it brings back um, what the fuck was the ghost of a Gozarian, and and it's just like, okay, so we got all that reestablished. But at the same time, we get this weird thing where it's like, the world established in Afterlife is not really the same world we're in here, um, which is kind of a weird situation to be in. Like, it, it, it very much feels like, in a weird way, the rise of Skywalker after The Last Jedi, where it's like, I don't like what you did. I don't like how you, how you set up this world, so I'm just gonna throw all that out and do it my own way. Um... So, they, they have to reestablish a lot of things and re-explain a lot of things, and it just kind of feels weird a lot of the time. Um, I think that, you know, and, and something I noticed in the credits, and this is something that, if it were me, would have pissed me off. McKenna Grace, she plays Phoebe, who is basically the lead of the movie. Um, she is fourth built in the credits, and it's something that, like, I looked at that and I'm like, that's weird, because, like, Paul Rudd is first built, then it's like, I think it's Carrie Coon, then Finn Wolfhart, who has, like, three lines, and most of it is interacting with, uh, what's his name, with, um, with, with, uh, Slimer, and then it's, and then it's McKenna Grace, and then it's Kumail Nanjiani, and I'm like, that's a fucking weird choice, and, and my biggest issue with this movie, as, as I'm watching it, and we get to the end, and, and the end feels, like, satisfying, but not for the movie that I just watched, uh, in a weird way, it, it feels like they had the third act. It's like, we know what the third act of this movie's going to be. It's going to be, you know, what's it called? It's going to be, uh, you know, the, the two teams coming together. They're going to fight this, this, this evil ghost thing, you know, together. 
they're gonna beat it, and everyone's gonna love the Ghostbusters again. It's great. Like, very clearly, you can tell from watching the movie that, like, that was designed. They they very much set up this third act. The problem is everything leading up to the third act. Because there are so many characters in this movie, none of it... It, it feels like Ghostbusters... Not Ghostbusters, um, Jurassic World Dominion. Where there are so many things going on, and so many, you know, parts of this movie that need to be adjusted at the, you know, and, and, and handled. Like, we, not every character gets a satisfying character arc or anything resembling a character arc. Some characters are just kind of there and don't really do too much. And it's just like, well, why are we even bothering with this? And the answer is nostalgia. I, I don't think there's a franchise that's been as milked to death as Ghostbusters in a way that's like, the original movie's great. Don't get me wrong. I do love the original movie. There's been one good Ghostbusters movie, though. There's been one, and that was the original in 1984. Like, it, it's it's a weird thing. And also, it's kind of weird that every time a Dune movie comes out, there's also a Ghostbusters movie in the same year. You ever notice that? 1984, um, there was a there was a, uh, a Dune movie and a Ghostbusters. Dune came out in 2021 as a Ghostbusters Afterlife, and then uh, Dune Part 2 is uh, same as Frozen Empire. Weird coincidences. Anyway, um... The, the issue I have is that the, the movie feels like, you know, it feels like you're being taken scene to scene for exposition. And that's what a lot of it is. It's like you're going scene to scene. Okay, here's some exposition. Okay, here's some exposition. Okay, here's some exposition. And it feels like a fan made it, but in the worst possible way. Because it's like, again, it, it's not as bad as like, you know, I want this to be an adult thing. And, and like, it feels like kids fan fiction where it's like the Ghostbusters are cool and they have like a lab and they do all these experiments on ghosts, and it's like, alright, sure, why not, um, I don't know, I, like, I didn't particularly care for most of the movie, the third act kind of worked for me, but the problem with that is, like I said, it's a third act to a movie I didn't watch, where it's like, the moment where, um, like, the, you know, like, Melody and Phoebe have that reconciliation kind of, like, feels like it came from a different movie. The moment where Kumail Nanjiani's character masters the fire and is able to use it the right way, which, again, feels like a different movie, it, 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 it's, it's there. The scene where, the, the part where, you know, you know, Phoebe is using the, uh, the bronze, uh, the, the brass-plated um, thing to, to capture the, what's it called, to prove herself and capture the, the evil, you know, god-ghost thing feels like a different movie, and, and again, we're in this situation where, like, you could have, this is another movie where it's kind of like Joker, you could have done this as it not being Ghostbusters, the problem is, no one would have made the movie, and no one would care, but because of it's, like, slap, like, there's nothing in this movie that specifically needs to be the Ghostbusters, you could have done this as an original thing and had it work a little bit better, because it, it like, a lot of the paranormal stuff in this movie doesn't feel like it exists in the same world as the original movies, and even Afterlife. Like, we're getting to a world of superpowers, and a world of gods, and a world of, like, weird things like that, where it's like, that's not... That, that didn't feel, like, consistent in a weird way. I also haven't watched the original Ghostbusters in a long time. Um, I, don't think they ever, I don't think they ever refer to Vigo de Carpathian or, or Gozer either time as a god just a, a really powerful ghost. I, I don't know. The whole thing's kind of weird. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that, like, I came out, I, I went into this expecting to hate this movie, um, because I'm not the biggest Ghostbusters fan on the planet, as, as I've said. I came out like, all right, I mean, it's not terrible. It's, it's definitely, it, it's serviceable enough for, you know, that. And again, I feel like we're going to be in the similar situation we were in for people who, you know, with Afterlife, where it's like, if you were someone who felt personally slighted by the existence of the female Ghostbusters, and were like, what about me? This might be a movie that works for you. Um, although, I don't think it necessarily will. There are certain things in the movie that I feel like are going to be questionable. Like, like, And that's the thing, too. It's like, a lot of the supporting cast is just kind of there, and doesn't really serve a purpose. Like, Lucky doesn't really do anything, neither does Podcast, and it's great that they still haven't figured out what to call this kid besides Podcast. Um... But they don't have really any role. Finn Wolfhard has very little role, if any. Um, and even, like, Carrie Coon has very little to do here. Like, she, she, she's, she's there to be the mother who's dealing with this 
this angsty teenager, but it doesn't really work because we never see, like, we haven't got a chance to see the two of them interact enough to be like, okay, this, this matters. Um, besides just we're assigning it that based on our, our personal, like, you know, like what we're bringing to it about a parental relationship. And that's a problem. I, I should, I should be able to feel for the characters and not just this is a, this is a stock mother and daughter. Like, and that's kind of the problem I had with this. Um, some of the effects were a little wonky. Some of the effects look pretty good. It's hit or miss. There was some weird ADR work, especially early on in the movie that I noticed where I'm like, all right. And that's part of what goes into, like, the, the, the idea that, like, they definitely had the third act planned, but they couldn't quite figure out how to get there because it feels like a lot of the first, like, two-thirds of this movie were built in post. Like, trying to figure out where to put action scenes, trying to figure out how to break up these just mountains of exposition, and it's like, all right, just move it along. Like, they probably would have been smarter to introduce the ghost earlier on in a interesting way. Um, like, fundamentally, my problem is, like, how did the ghost get released in the first place in, in the, in 1904, if the lady just captured it again? Like, there, there, there's, the, the, that whole aspect was weird. Um, I get what it's there for. It's there to introduce. Like, I would have rather they showed, like, you know, like, a flashback. Like, do, like, I, I know it's probably going to kill the budget, but, like, a Justice League style flashback. Oh, God, I hate that I'm invoking Zack Snyder, but, like, a Justice League style flashback to what happened when the humans, you know, had to fight this thing. And again, feels like we're in a different franchise, and that's a problem. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely, you know, this movie is not as awful as I went into it expecting. I went into this with very low expectations, and I was pleasantly surprised a good amount of the time. I was pleasantly surprised enough to the point where I didn't leave this, like... I was able to forget about the fact that I would much rather be playing Stardew Valley 1.6 than I would be rather play... than I spent watching that movie. Because that was the thing, like, leading up to it, I was like, oh, can I just go home and play Stardew Valley? I've gotten really into that again with the new update. And, and, you know, it is what it is. It managed to turn that off for a little bit for me, which... Mission accomplished, I guess would be the right way to say that. Um, so, you know, I, I would say this is a four. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, it's probably a five. But, I mean, I think for most normal people, it's probably a four. Um, see it in a theater. I don't think you need to rush out to see it immediately. I don't think you need to rush out to see it on the biggest screen possible. My only thing is, I don't think you need to rush out to see it on a, what's it called? Like, you don't need the premium format um, is one thing. And I also don't think you need the... You know, like, I don't know if it's something that, come next week, you should see instead of Godzilla, Godzilla and Kong, the new empire. Um, or, if you haven't seen Dune yet, Dune is definitely a higher priority to, than this. Um, that said, I mean, I think when we do our power ranking, the quarterly power ranking for the studios, I think Sony will be solidly in last place. Um, we'll have to look, dive deep on that, I mean... I, don't, I gotta think about where, where Universal really falls on this, um, but we got we gotta take a look at this and see and see how they deal with this, you know, with these two movies. They have a lot of work to do. Um, but that's a new thing we're gonna do on the website. So on the website, uh, mwpnews.com, that's a good transition. Um, you can check out. We have posts for every uh, podcast episode as I remember to put them up, and then also other news items that break throughout the day if I get to it before my lunch break and I don't have something else to do on my lunch break, then I will put that up. Um, but also, we're going to be doing quarterly power rankings for the studios on who's doing the best so far. Um, and then we're going to do... Um, what's it called? We're gonna, we also have monthly uh, power rankings for Oscars uh, for what the best picture contenders are. Um, so we'll see. We will see about you know how all of this goes, and I'm interested to see what, what comes next. Um... Yeah, I just think Sony has a lot of thinking to do. That said, I will definitely be going to see eight Sony movies. Oh, no, hang on. Three, six, eight. Yeah, eight Sony movies on, in consecutive weeks. I think we're going to turn that into a bit um, over on 30-minute reviews. I'm not 100% certain on that yet, but I have a feeling we're going to turn that into a bit where we rank the Spider-Man movies um, against each other on a weekly basis. 
um, just the week after it's in theaters. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Even playing field, we see all the movies in theaters, having not watched them for a while. So it'll be, it'll be fun. We'll do that. Um, but yeah, I think that that, look forward to that over on 30 Minute Reviews. I'm going to put up an article announcing that later. Um, but we will wrap up there for today. Go see Ghostbusters, I guess. It, it, like, I, I wouldn't say rush out to see it. If you want to go see a movie this weekend and you've seen Dune already and you don't want to see Dune again, I get it. It's two hours and 45 minutes. You would find worse ways to spend your time with Ghostbusters. And I wonder, had they not had the dickless joke at the very end, would I be this high on the movie? Because I feel like that joke got me at the end where I'm like, that's that's a good callback to a, to, to 40 years ago. Um, but yeah, we'll wrap up there for today. So tomorrow morning we have X-Men 97 episodes 1 and 2 from Disney+. Plus. On uh, Saturday we have The Girls on the Bus episode 3, um, which is a show that I'm enjoying. Uh, and then on Monday we will catch up with The Regime. Um, but... We'll wrap up there for today. And until our next episode, have a great rest of your week. Thirty minute reviews, beware of spoilers, and exploring hyperspace lanes are all available ad free. But if you want to support the show, you can go to bewareofspoilers.com and click the support button that's available on the Spotify website. Thank you.